It's the LGBTQ AIP, thank you. Number two, community, which was, which was birthed from intersectional feminism, is now responsible for women getting the sh kicked out of them. A transgender Texas wrestler just won his uh, second high school title. So here's my question of the day before we move on is, do you think that this is a fringe issue that won't affect many, or do you think that this trans equivalency with women is actually starting to really harm women as we're seeing in sports. Do you think that that's a microcosm? You're seeing that at large, the LGBTQ AAIP movement. I know it sort of deconstructs a, a, the, the fundamental premise of feminism, but let's remove that. Do you think it's starting to hurt women at large? Um, I think so, I think this is an example. So this is Mark Beggs, a senior from Ulysses Trinity High School near Dallas, is in the process of transitioning from female to male and taking low dose of testosterone. Uh, just entered a high school wrestling tournament with an undefeated record and surprise, won. <laughs> that picture says a thousand words right there. <laughs> so supporters have called Briggs brave and beautiful, dismissing her detractors as doctors, scientists, and the rest. <laughs> you know, experts. <laughs> let's do this. Compare the average testosterone level of a male versus uh, female. So like, let's, let's compare them and then compare them on anabolic steroids. So for a male, the mid-range test level between 25 and 30 years is about 670. You hear that? That's free. That's total testosterone, not free testosterone. It's measured by nanograms per deciliter. So this is the number. When you hear the number 670, I'm going to use numbers that are pretty consistent for comparison. You can look it up afterwards. So uh, when it comes to steroids or when it comes to injected testosterone, it, it varies wildly. Studies, though, have been conducted officially with men injecting 600 milligrams per week, okay, which results in testosterone levels of about... 2,350 and some change, okay? Wow. That's higher. So that means that a doping athlete, a male athlete versus another male athlete, might have something like a three and a half times testosterone advantage of a natural athlete. Now, here's what's important. Obviously, testosterone, but you can see this a lot with uh, growth hormone, with luteinizing hormone, hormones across the, the board. It determines not only your ability to recover, also neurotransmitters, also how your bones develop. These are very important. That's why people pay a lot of money for Also, them. if you're an asshole. Yes, uh, it amplifies it. Now, the goal <laughs> of transgender hormone replacement therapy is to get women into the normal range of males. Okay, so uh, uh, this actually comes to us from, uh, 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 is this from, where is this from, Sen? Boston University. Boston University, okay. Target, uh, pract uh, target, a practical target for hormone therapy for transgender men, female to male, that's where you see FTM, in case you see a lot of this, is to increase testosterone levels to the normal male physiological, they're trying to get it to that 600 range, okay? Right. We're going to do 1,000. So, let's, normal male range, 670. You're trying to get a woman to 670, and you're allowing them to compete against other women. Mid-range for females without hormone replacement therapy is around 42. Oh my gosh. 42 man. nanograms per deciliter. <laughs> this means that a female to male transgender could have roughly a seven to 23 times the testosterone advantage of a normal woman. Much, it, take the most steroided out freak it could possibly imagine out in a thong on the Mr. Olympia stage. He does not even enjoy <laughs> a fraction of the hormonal advantage over his male counterparts that a male enjoys over a female, period let alone a female in hormone replacement therapy. And it's more important because here's the thing, even once you stop the hormones, if you've had these during your developing stages, it, it stays with you. Again, your bones, your muscles, how they've developed, you start to lose it, you start to atrophy. But think of these, these people, male to female, they've developed as a man their entire life wow. with 20 plus times the amount of hormones that a woman would have. And then all of a sudden they say, uh, you know what, your honor, I would like to be a, uh, I think I'm a woman now. And uh, I'd like to be free to beat up women. <laughs> they champ. And they say, okay. <laughs> we don't want to dush. This is not the first time this has happened. People say this is not an extreme example. We talked about Fallon Fox, yeah. a man beating up a woman. Let's roll this clip. Not gay, Jared. As you can see very much, it's not hyperly technical. It looks like what you would expect a domestic uh, dispute would look like. It looks like a man <laughs> beating up a woman. Just look. Just picking it up and just bah, smash. Uh, male to female transgender weightlifter won gold. That's one. Then you had a male to female transgender uh, won their second sprinting title recently. And of course, you had a cyclist who won the, uh, was it Tour de Arizona? Tour de Tucson. Tour de Tour Tucson. Tucson. On the flip side, there are, uh, well, and, uh, there are a few examples of female to males continuing to compete in women's teams and divisions. This happened in Texas because they don't allow you to transition. So uh, Kylie Elam's female to male who continued to play in women's NCAA basketball had been taking testosterone for a long time. Um, there aren't many examples of that. Okay, but that does happen. So you have male to female, they compete in female sports, and then female to male, eh, still compete in female sports, because when females go to male sports, they don't do so well, so you don't hear about it a whole lot. Take, for example, the famous female to male transgender, I think it was a, uh, Chris, Chris Mazzi, the duathlete, 
was worried about competing because of these anti-trans laws. Nah, you placed 37th. <laughs> so the laws weren't what mattered so Oops. much. <laughs> It was Trailer Baylor, uh, world renowned female to male transgender swimmer, ranked 83rd at the most recent. Uh, recent. So yeah. it's not so much the anti, you know, it's not, <laughs> but your biology isn't bigoted. You're just not that good. <laughs> now, back to Texas, you were talking about the parents, yeah. this wrestling champion. Um, I find this funny that the person, the female to male, the Z, I don't, wanna, I don't want this to get banned off of YouTube, by the way. Oh, sorry. By the way, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed because this definitely won't show up in your feed. Um, <laughs> The mom, Beg's mother, said he has so much respect for all the girls he wrestles. First off, <laughs> hold on, Sven. Come back to me. We'll bring it back up that overlay. Okay, mom. When you say about your son, girl, when you say about your girl son, <laughs> he has so much respect for all the girls he wrestles, how much strength does it take for you to not blow your own head off? <laughs> <laughs> My son has all the respect in the world for all the girls out of whom he beats the ever-loving <laughs> <laughs> It's obvious. He does it with respect. So, okay, bring it back up. Angela McNew is the that. mother. People think Mac has been beating up on girls. The girls he wrestles with, they are pretty tough. It has more to do with skill and discipline than strength. It kind of has to do with strength. You... And steroids, don't yeah. forget. <laughs> has to do with steroids. <laughs> and gigantic I... levels of testosterone. It's just technique. Right. He has all the respect for the ladies because he used to be one. I don't... It's... <laughs> what do you think that he's going to... Like, listen, I just, I just want you to know you're a tough chick. I have, all, I have all the respect for you in the world as an independent woman. Oil check. Do you have any idea of a horror <laughs> for a girl going out and wrestling? So much this... respect. Oh, Burkott. And and, and, and and you know what? They'll try and say, well, why don't you just let him compete as a, as a male? Um, this person doesn't necessarily want to compete as a male. No. That's the thing. When you look at when they do have the option, yeah. they try and wiggle into, as we see, there are far more examples of female to male transgender still competing as females than there are competing as males. And then, of course, all males to females compete as females. If you have two cups of coffee, the Russians are going to take a, a urine test right afterward. <laughs> yeah. You test positive in the sure. Olympics. So yeah. there's, there's a certain threshold for caffeine. Right. Right. But with a girl injecting testosterone directly into her ass cheek, however, the rule book gets a little bit murky. <laughs> Lawed with praise. Here. And this is done in the, the name the of confetti. gender equality, but yeah. it's it's always, this is the thing, and we, 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 I'm talking about this at large, it's always the biological females that suffer. If you let people switch genders, you end up with male to female transgenders, they compete and they crush women. If you don't let the athletes switch genders, but still allow them to compete while injecting testosterone, the doping women, and women, they end up crushing the women, as you see in the wrestling competition here. Now, on the flip side, if you're logically, ideologically consistent, and you force the female to male athletes to compete with men, we'll have record level of sporting deaths that you've never seen before. <laughs> it's almost like, is that a win-win? <laughs> it's almost like there is no win. It's almost as though put taking women and putting them on the football field with men, there's no way you're winning that situation. By, by that same token, it's almost as though if you were to take that woman, inject her full of male hormones, and let her compete against women, there's also no winning. Yeah. It's a lose, lose, lose. But here's the deal. It's only a lose, lose, lose for women. We don't really care. <laughs> a transgender woman comes into our sport, it's kind of cute. And we say, all right, come on, get out of here. And we brush them aside and we compete with the real men. The LGBTQ AIP, thank you. Number two, community, <laughs> which, was, which was birthed from intersectional feminism, is now responsible for women getting the sh kicked out of them. Not figuratively. Literally! Hey, did you like this video? Of course you did. Let's there's something wrong with you. In which case you can comment below. What's your problem with this video? We want to hear from you and we promise you 100% I give you, my word is my bond, will answer every single negative comment. Uh, for those who are normal, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe.